In today's video, I'm going to discuss the differences between the Spikes Tactical Buffer Kit and the Palmetto State Armory, or otherwise the short name, PSA, their buffer kit. And the buffer kit consists of the buffer spring, the buffer, the castle nut, the end plate, and the buffer tube. On the left, we have the PSA buffer kit, and on the right, we have the Spikes Tactical. So, I'm going to start with the Spikes Tactical buffer kit first, uh, because the PSA is a little bit more, more in-depth. With Spikes Tactical, they have one buffer kit, and of course, you can buy these components individually. Um, this particular buffer kit uh, runs about $62, I believe. Depends on where you buy it from and shipping and if they're available and so on. And the parts are all available individually, but the parts are basically all the same. So you get a six position mil spec buffer tube made out of T. 70 75 or at 7075 T6 aluminum with a dry film lube, lube on the inside, um, mil spec castle nut, mil spec end plate, and you have the spikes ST T2 tungsten filled buffer. Um, this is a little bit heavier than, a, than an H buffer, it's a, about uh, 4.1 ounces and you get a buffer spring which is a it's a mil spec 17-4 spring that's about all I know about the spikes uh, buffer spring that is the spikes kit now the PSA kit on the other side starting here um, PSA is a little bit more complicated and I get a lot of emails from people asking about PSA and, and their kits and uh, they have more options, let's just say that. So the PSA Classic, if you get a classic buffer tube kit, that is not 775 aluminum, it's a 6061 aluminum. And to make things more complicated, they have not only a six position buffer tube, they have a five position buffer tube. And so they've got a six position 6061 buffer tube and a 7075 six position buffer tube. So you've got at least three flavors of, of buffer tubes. And I haven't tried all of them because I, I normally. I'm not going to normally buy a 6061 aluminum buffer tube um, because it's not mil spec. Um, so, also, when we talk about mil spec and buffer tubes, that gets a bit confusing because you have the mil spec and the commercial buffer tube. And those terms indicate the diameter size, the commercial buffer tube. Um, is, geez, I'm trying to think, it's, it's a little bit larger than the mil spec buffer tube. So if you buy a mil spec buffer tube, you're, you should be getting one specific diameter size, but it doesn't guarantee that it's mil spec quality. You have to do a little bit more work on your end. Um, the military M4 uh, uses uh, a 70-75 T6 aluminum buffer tube, six position with a dry film lube. Uh, on that same note, the upper receiver uh, is also T70-75, or it's 775 T6 aluminum with dry film lube as well. 
if you're familiar with uh, the military specifications on their M4. So if you want to go true mil spec, you're going to want the 7075 6 position buffer tube with the dry film loop. So if you're buying from PSA, and I buy a lot from PSA, you've got to be very careful about what you buy. Uh, a lot of their products advertised don't say what the buffer tube is made out of. They don't say anything about dry film lube either. Some of their items will say 7075, some will say 6061, others say nothing. So um, you've got to qualify it. That's one of the, the better things with the spikes kit is you don't have to worry about what are you going to get when you buy something. You, you, they only have one and it's all mil spec quality. So um, I wanted to clarify that um, because I've, I, I feel a lot of emails about that and it, it is confusing. And I had somebody email me the other day and said, well, what's the difference between 6061 and 7075? Well, the, the main difference um, is the strength of it. The 7075 has an 83,000 PSI, PSI tensile strength. The 6061 has a 45,000 PSI tensile strength. So you can see the 7075 is the much stronger buffer tube. Does this mean for your rifle build the 6061 is no good? No, absolutely not. Um, when we talk military, spec military specification, mil spec, we're discussing what the military specifies for their weapons. Um, if, if you've ever been in the armed forces, you know that your weapon is your best friend and it takes a lot of abuse and your life depends upon your weapon. Because of how they're used, um, the military goes above and beyond um, with their specifications. And I think that's necessary for the type of use those components see. In the civilian world, where your rifle may be a, uh, may live primarily in the safe and you take it out to the range and shoot it occasionally, do you need all mil spec components? Probably not. You could probably get by just fine with the 6061 buffer tube and and so on and so on. So um, I myself, when I build a rifle, um, I'm going to build it using as close to mil military specification as I can get. I know that quality is very, very good. The durability, the longevity is there. Um, it can take an immense amount of abuse and you can you know, if your life depends on it, it's, it's going to be there for, for you when you need it. So that's me. That's how I build my rifles. So, um, what, um, getting back to what we're looking at here um, on the video screen, the kit on the left, the PSA kit, um, this is the kit that comes with the Black Hawk lower build kit. And if you go to PSA's site, they don't tell you much about the buffer tube at all. So you're kind of buying that blind. And fortunately, um, this one is a 7075 um, mil spec buffer tube with a dry film lube on the inside of it. Although on their website, it doesn't say that. Um, the PSA buffer tube kit like this, I believe it runs about 50, I think it's about $50. It, it's hard for me to say because most of their stuff's out of stock and when it's in stock they have a price, but when it's out of stock they don't have a price. Um, I, I was just on their site looking before I started this video 
the only buffer tube kit they have available on their site which is like this kit is a five position buffer tube kit so the only available uh, buffer tube kit on PSA's website right at the moment uh, is about fifty dollars and it's their five position buffer tube and of course it doesn't say if it's sixty sixty one or it's seventy seventy five um, I should also note that the Blackhawk lower build kit, which is what this buffer tube came out of, and that kit comes with the Blackhawk uh, adjustable stock and a lower parts kit minus the trigger assembly. That is $69.95 on special. So that's a, a pretty good buy when you, uh, when you, when you look at, at that and compare it to the spikes. You get um, you know, almost a full lower parts kit and you get a uh, ergo rubber grip, uh, the Blackhawk stock, and of course the, uh, uh, the buffer tube kit. So that's a pretty good buy because all you need to do is add a, a, a a fire control group to that and uh, you're good to go. So um, the let's discuss some other differences here. Um, the castle nuts and the end plates I really don't see any difference in, in them. Um, the spikes spring is a, a shinier stainless steel compared to the uh, the PSA. I have no idea what kind of spring comes with this PSA kit. It's obviously different from the Spikes kit. You can tell by the color. Is one better than the other? I, I couldn't tell you. The big difference in these kits, the spring wants to roll on me, is going to be the buffer. With the PSA, you get the uh, metal weighted buffer and it's a carbine weight buffer buffer so I weighed this one on my scale it's about three ounces the spikes the STT2 is the tungsten powder filled buffer so you don't you don't hear the weights in there because it's a it's a powder and this is about 4.1 or so ounces so it's 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 between an H and an H1 buffer. Um, I use this in, in my rifles. I like this a lot. In my opinion, this is way too light. I, I, I can't use these. Um, if I buy a kit that comes with this, I've got to replace it with a heavier buffer, an H or an H1 buffer. Um, my rifles shoot very smooth with this. Um, this is just a great buffer. I like it a lot. So that's the big difference between these two kits is is this buffer um, the buffer tubes the colors are a little different the design is very similar and I don't know if you can notice this but the spikes buffer tube these last three stops for the stock have a, a hole in them that go all the way to the inside of the buffer tube. The PSA does not have that. Uh, I don't know what it's for. Also notice the color is a little bit different. The spikes is a little darker black and the PSA is a little lighter. The spikes also has um, silk screening on it indicating what position your stock is in. And this is going to be kind of hard to catch on, on the camera. The easiest way to tell if the buffer tube you have is a 70-75 mil spec buffer tube is to look for the light gray finish on the inside of the buffer tube. That light gray finish is the dry film lube. The 6061 buffers do not have that. The inside will be the same color as the outside. That's the only way I know of to tell um, 
what's a 70-75 and what's a 60-61. So let's give a couple more angles. But other than that, these tubes are very, very similar in, in their, uh, their look and feel. So. Um, just checking my uh, talking notes here to make sure I, I, I covered everything. Uh, again, um, I just want to stress that I've used both of these kits quite a bit on different builds. Um, I don't have any problems with the PSA kits. Um, um, I, the only only issue I mentioned is the, this carbine weight buffer. It's, it's too light for my taste. So um, on those particular kits, I've replaced this with a Spikes STT2 buffer. Uh, which one's the better buy? Um, well, right now, this kit, if you buy the, the Black Hawk uh, lower build kit, um, that's, that's a pretty good buy um, if you plan on using their lower parts kit and, and such uh, for $70 because that's basically the same price as the spikes right here. So, and then what else are you getting for it? You're getting the, the grip, which is a good grip. It's an Ergo rubber grip made for Black Hawk with a plug on it. I did a video, um, a review of that kit. The Blackhawk stock, um, which is a good stock as well, and then uh, uh, the lower parts kit minus the fire control group. So that's like seventy dollars. That's a really good buy, um, and that's more or less the same price as this. Um, and you know, when you buy this for seventy, you still got to get your pistol grip, your lower parts kit, and a stock. So you can be the judge on what you think the better value is. Um, uh, so that's about going to wrap this video up. I've covered all the talking points on the differences. Just make sure if you're going to buy buy something from PSA's site and, and it doesn't say specifically what it is, you better call them or email them and ask you know what comes in that particular kit. Uh, also, I've heard uh, several people uh, complained that they've ordered a 7075 uh, buffer tube from PSA and they got something other than that. So um, that's those are those could be isolated incidents with PSA where they're getting parts mixed up. I don't know. That's not happened to me personally. That's some um, you know third party information I'm passing along. So um, know what you're ordering inspect it when it comes in, verify it is what it's supposed to be. If it isn't, call them up and get an RMA number and send it back and get the right part. So hopefully that was helpful on uh, clarifying some of the differences in the um, buffer tubes and what you get from spikes versus what you get from PSA.